Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about comparative advantage. Comparative advantage allows us to use specialization and trade to make us better off. If after watching this video you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the Total Review Booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics AP exams. Now let's get into the content. So before we get into comparative advantage, let's talk about absolute advantage. And to do that, we're going to look at these two countries, big country and little country. Of course, countries can make all kinds of different goods, but we're going to simplify this and assume that they can make just two goods, meat and grain. Big country, if they put all of their resources towards the production of grain, they can produce 80 tons of grain. If they put all their resources towards the production of meat, on the other hand, they will have 40 tons of meat. Little country, on the other hand, if they put all of their resources towards the production of grain, will have 20 tons of grain. And if they put all of their resources towards the production of meat, they will have 20 tons of meat. If we put these numbers on production possibilities curves, big countries' production possibilities curve would look something like this, while little countries' production possibilities curve would look something like this. Now, absolute advantage is the ability to produce more of something with fixed resources or the same amount of something with fewer resources. So essentially, absolute advantage is who's better at the production of a particular good. Back to our table and graphs here, who has the absolute advantage in the production of grain? So if we compare the numbers we have for these two countries in the production of grain on the table or the graph, we can see that big country has the absolute advantage in the production of grain, and that's because 80 tons is greater than 20 tons. When it comes to the absolute advantage for the production of meat, on the other hand, big country can produce 40 tons and little country can produce 20 tons. Once again, big country has the absolute advantage here because 40 tons is greater than 20 tons. Now, absolute advantage is something you need to know on the AP microeconomics and macroeconomics exams. But what's more important in economics is comparative advantage. Comparative advantage is the ability to produce something at a lower opportunity cost. And as you may have already learned, opportunity cost is what you give up when you make a choice. In this case, we're looking at the opportunity cost for the production of grain or meat. And this is how we determine the best use of resources in production of products. Let's take a look at these numbers again here. These numbers that we have in the chart are finished products. We have tons of grain and tons of meat. That means this is an output problem. The numbers in the table are outputs. And when it comes to output problems, the formula for opportunity cost is the other over formula. That means the opportunity cost for producing one unit of good A is the numbers we have for the other one, good B, divided by the numbers we have for good A. Let me show you what I'm talking about. First, let's take a look at big country and their opportunity cost for producing grain. So the opportunity cost of grain is the numbers we have for the other one, meat, 40 tons, divided by the numbers we have for grain. 80 tons. Reduce that fraction down and it gives us half a ton of meat being our opportunity cost for producing one ton of grain. But when big country on the other hand produces one ton of meat, we're going to take the numbers we have for grain, the other one, that's 80, and divide it by the numbers we have for meat, which is 40. Reduce that fraction down and that means that the opportunity cost for producing one ton of meat for big country is two tons of grain. Now we're going to calculate the opportunity cost for little country. When they produce one ton of grain, the opportunity cost is the numbers we have for the other one, 20 divided by 20. And that gives us one ton of meat lost for every ton of grain produced. And the opportunity cost for the production of meat is the numbers we have for the other one, still 20 divided by 20 again. And that means that the opportunity cost of producing one ton of meat is one ton of grain for little country. So now that we have the opportunity cost calculated here, let's remember that comparative advantage is the ability to produce something at a lower opportunity cost. So which country has the comparative advantage in the production of grain? Well, big country has a opportunity cost of half a ton of meat, while little country has an opportunity cost of one ton of meat. Which is smaller, half a ton or one ton? So big country does have the comparative advantage in the production of grain because half a ton of meat is a lower opportunity cost than one ton of meat. So which country has the comparative advantage in the production of meat? Again, we're going to compare the opportunity costs here. Big country has an opportunity cost of two tons of grain every time they produce one ton of meat, while little country, on the other hand, has an opportunity cost of one ton of grain every time they produce a ton of meat. And since one ton of grain is a lower opportunity cost than two tons of grain, little country has the comparative advantage in the production of meat. 
And if both countries specialize in the production of the good for which they have the comparative advantage, their production points on their production possibilities curves would be right here for big country. That's 80 tons of grain and zero tons of meat being produced. Now little country is going to produce 20 tons of meat and zero tons of grain. Now big country is not going to consume all 80 tons of grain and little country is not going to consume all 20 tons of meat. Now that they have specialized, they're going to trade for the other product using the product they've made. Now the two countries are going to negotiate the terms of this trade and both countries will be seeking a terms of trade that will be beneficial to them. If both countries are going to benefit from trade, that means the terms of trade are mutually beneficial and those mutually beneficial terms will fall between their two opportunity costs for a particular good. So when it comes to grain, one ton of grain, if it's mutually beneficial, will be worth between half a ton of meat and one ton of meat. And one ton of meat, on the other hand, will be worth between one and two tons of grain if the terms of trade are mutually beneficial. But what if one ton of grain is actually traded for three tons of meat? Well, big country has the comparative advantage for grain and they want a high price for their grain. Anything above half a ton of meat is beneficial to them. Three tons is way more than half a ton, so big country is going to benefit with this terms of trade. Little country, on the other hand, is not producing grain. They're actually producing meat. And if they have to give up more than one ton of meat, they are going to be losing in this exchange. And it would be better for them to produce the grain themselves. So with this terms of trade being outside the mutually beneficial range, Big country is going to benefit and little country is going to be worse off. But what if one ton of grain is actually traded for a quarter ton of meat? Who's helped and who's hurt by that terms of trade? Now big country is going to want at least a half a ton of meat. And since it's lower than that, they are going to be hurt. Now little country wants to give up no more than one ton of meat. And this is way less than one ton of meat. And so big country is hurt and little country is helped by this terms of trade. So if the terms of trade are above the mutually beneficial range for the good we're trading just one unit of, that means the country with the comparative advantage in the production of that good will be better off, while the country without the comparative advantage will be worse off. And if the terms of trade are below the mutually beneficial range for the product we're trading just one unit of, then that is going to hurt the country with the comparative advantage in the production of that good and benefit the country without the comparative advantage in that good. Now let's see what happens when these two countries trade. Let's say they negotiate and agree upon a mutually beneficial terms of trade here, where one ton of meat is worth one and a half tons of grain. Let's say that little country trades away 10 tons of meat for 15 tons of big country's grain. On our production possibilities curve, that means big country is going to be losing 15 tons of grain and gaining 10 tons of meat. And that means they are consuming at that point there outside their curve. Little country on the other hand is going to gain 15 tons of grain and lose 10 tons of meat. That means they are at that point there for their consumption of grain and meat. Now remember, a production possibilities curve is the maximum amount of production. It is impossible to produce outside of one's production possibilities curve. But as we see through specialization and trade, it is possible to consume outside one's production possibilities curve. And that shows us the benefit of specialization and trade using comparative advantage. Now let's take a look at another type of problem. These are called input problems. These are inputs because the numbers we have in this table, minutes, are units of labor that go into the production of a particular product. In this case, the product is mopping and vacuuming. Ashley takes six minutes to mop while Omar takes 12 minutes. Vacuuming takes Ashley three minutes and Omar takes four minutes. Now who has the absolute advantage in both mopping and vacuuming? Since this is an input problem, using fewer resources to produce a good is the absolute advantage here. And that means Ashley has the absolute advantage in vacuuming because three minutes is less than four minutes. And when it comes to the absolute advantage in mopping, Ashley still has the absolute advantage because six minutes of labor is less than 12 minutes of labor. Now, when it comes to an input problem, you're never going to see it as production possibilities curves. You're only going to see it as a table or perhaps a word problem. But when we're calculating comparative advantage with a input problem, the opportunity cost is calculated using the it over formula. So with inputs, the opportunity cost of producing one unit of good A is the numbers for it, A, divided by the numbers for B. So for Ashley, we're going to look at the opportunity cost of one mopping. It will be the numbers we have for mopping, which is six, divided by the numbers we have for vacuuming, 
three. And that means for every mopping, Ashley is going to give up two vacuumings. That's her opportunity cost. The opportunity cost of producing one vacuuming is the numbers we have for vacuuming, three divided by six, which is one half of a mopping for every vacuuming she does. Now, Omar's opportunity cost for mopping is the numbers we have for mopping, 12, divided by the numbers we have for vacuuming, the other one, which is four. 12 divided by four means three vacuumings are lost every time Omar does a mopping. And that means the opportunity cost of producing one vacuuming is the reciprocal here. It's always going to be the reciprocal of the first good. Four divided by 12, which is one third of a mopping. And one more time, comparative advantage is the ability to produce something at a lower opportunity cost. So who has the comparative advantage in mopping? Well, that is going to be Ashley, because losing two vacuumings is going to be a lower opportunity cost than losing three vacuumings. So Ashley has the comparative advantage because two is less than three. So who has the comparative advantage for the other product, in this case, vacuuming? Since one third is less than one half, Omar has the comparative advantage in vacuuming. So if Ashley is going to specialize in the production of mopping, while Omar is going to specialize in the production of vacuuming, they can trade services with each other and find mutually beneficial terms of trade within their opportunity costs. That means one mopping will be mutually beneficial if it's traded for two vacuumings up to three vacuumings. Now mutually beneficial terms of trade for vacuuming will fall between one third of a mopping up to one half of a mopping. And those terms would make both Ashley and Omar better off. And there you have it. That is everything you need to know about comparative advantage, including absolute advantage. If you're ready to practice this, head over to ReviewEcon.com and play the comparative advantage game to make sure you really understand it. And if you still need more help after that, remember to pick up that total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics AP exams. That's it for now. I'll see you all next time.